So I made this whole long drawn out video talking like a weird robot because that's what I do when it comes to making YouTube videos and it just frustrates me and then I'll make YouTube videos because I watch a YouTube video and I'm like, what is wrong with you? Who are you? I don't even know who you are. Anyways, listen, all I want to say is when you live in a van, your perspective of life is great. Way better than when you live in a, a, a house. When you live in a house, you don't feel the weather directly the same way because you got fake heat and fake air conditioning. And so the outdoor temperature in the summer is gonna be way hotter because now you're used to sleeping in 70 degree air conditioning. And then the winter is way colder because you're used to sleeping in 70-ish degree heating. And then you wake up, you step outside, it's 39 degrees, it's like, oh my God, it's freezing. Me, I'm living in the elements. Morning, noon, and night, every single day, week, month, and year. So, for example, in the summer when it's 110 degrees every day, and then the following morning when I wake up in my van and it's 85, 86 degrees, maybe even 88, maybe even 89 on some particular occasions, but for the most part, 85 degrees, that's not hot. That's nice. It feels great. So my mornings in July are wonderful. There's such a perfect temperature. It feels so nice outside. You gotta understand if you live in a humid climate, living in a dry climate, 85 degrees in the desert, yes, it's going to feel great. And that's how it was, that was my experience. The daytime temperatures when I wasn't working, driving around in an air conditioned car all day, well, they're a little toasty, a little uncomfortable, but I'll tell you what, you do get used to it. But that's not the point. The point is acclimation and perspective. You see what everything is, you feel what everything is, you get used to it, you can feel how you're actually getting used to it, how you're adapting. You can see it all unfolding. For example, the people. There are people in this park, I've been in this park for 14, almost 15 months at this point. Next month will be 15 months, a couple weeks. And I've seen many, many people come and go but there are many, many people that live out in this park in their vehicles, mostly in cars. And I'm sorry, because I know that must be incredibly uncomfortable, but it is what it is. And it makes you aware, if you're a little bit of a thinker, how these people got here. You know, a lot of people probably just ended up here most likely from COVID situations and losing jobs. You know, they probably had all the usual, right? Apartments and all the bills that go with it. And they're a waitress, a waiter, a bartender, a chef, anything in the restaurant industry. Everything gets shut down. They can't go get another job somewhere. Anywhere, really. There's nowhere to go. The entire country is like shut down in terms of restaurants. So now you're, 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 you're screwed with that scenario. You can't pay the rent. You can't pay your bills. You're slowly losing everything. Let's bring it back for a second. I live in a van. If there's an economic collapse, nobody can take my van away. I'm not getting evicted from my van. The mortgage company is not coming to, you know, um, take my house. I'm not going into foreclosure. There's no payments on this thing. It's a 1998 Chevy Express. I own it. The city's not taking it because I didn't pay a water bill or taxes, property tax. I don't have any of that. I just renewed my registration yesterday. April 12th. It was due on the April 16th, so I'm early. It cost me $118 for a year, and that's it. $20 of that was because of the stupid Raiders plate that I have, and then another 4 or $5 for the Raider Foundation something silly. But you can't get rid of it. I'd have to just renew the registration like I did, and then go make an appointment for the registry sorry, the DMV. It's a registry in Boston. It's a DMV here. And I think a lot of places. So at the DMV and uh, then go in and tell them I would like to have a classic rod plate. If I get the classic rod plate, I will not lo no longer have to do a smog test on my vehicle. Pretty excited about that. Lots of people with vehicles in the 90s have it. I've spoken to many of them go get a classic rod plate. And then when it comes around next year that you should have a smog test, the system won't even generate it because of the classic rod, cancels it all out. So that's a cool thing. But the point is, 
I own my vehicle. The point is, I own my vehicle free and clear. Nobody can take it from me. The state's not coming to take it from me. That's it. So in terms of economic collapse, I would much rather be here in my vehicle doing what I do, living my life, not having any issues. I work. I'm a plumber. I'm pretty blessed in that regard. I'm also a, a union plumber. I choose not to work directly for the union. I do maintain my union dues so I don't lose that membership or whatever you call it. You might be insulted if it's a membership. But anyways, with all that said, there's a lot to learn from living in a van, living in the streets, being so close to people that are so down, seeing all the homelessness right up close in person, and it gives you that it gives you a more realistic view of life where you're just kind of, you can lose everything in 2.2 seconds. If I lost my ability to work, to create an income, meaning I got hurt, a medical something, brain tumor, I broke my back, it doesn't matter what it is, I no longer can work, I no longer can create an income, right? Let's assume I can't even get any type of assistance. I can't get social security. I can't get anything like that. So I'm, I'm screwed. Just like somebody who would be homeless. Living in a van does not keep me immune from that. Living in a house doesn't keep me immune from that. There is zero difference between living in my van, living in a conventional dwelling, losing my job or losing my ability to gain a job, to gain employment, to create an income. Zero difference. The only difference is I'm much more secure here in my van than I would be in an apartment, obviously. If I can't pay the rent anymore in an apartment, I'm getting evicted. If I'm getting evicted and I don't have a van like this, I don't have a plan B and I don't have people or I don't have somewhere to go, you literally go to the streets. Literally. There's, that's it. That's, that's your option. You pack your stuff, you sell most of it, you maybe get a storage unit, which you probably won't be able to afford in a few months, and then you just start walking and wandering the streets, assuming you don't have people and you don't have anywhere to go. I got people, I got places to go, my parents are still alive, so to be physically homeless and living on the streets would be just impossible for me at the current moment, but that does not rescue me, that doesn't rescue my thoughts from understanding how easy it is to become homeless. There are so many people that, that are very arrogant where they live a life where they make very large sums of money, six digits, seven digit incomes, and they don't realize that they could literally lose that overnight, right? So if you have somebody who makes an income Let's say you got somebody that's living that really nice life where they're, you know, they're a programmer for Facebook or Google and um, they get into a bad car accident and um, their hands are mangled. They get into a car accident and they lost their vision. They get into a car accident and or they had a stroke, they had a massive heart attack. Whatever it is, they can no longer maintain their employment at Google or Facebook. Or whatever big tech company pays them big tech company money. What do you think is going to happen? They got big tech money house and big tech money cars. All these things need to be paid for. Taxes, insurance, right? Like water bills. All these things can be taken away. You need to maintain the income. You need to maintain the money. The only people that are truly like resistant to all this stuff are people that have lots of passive income from you know, real estate investments and they got rental properties, which can also be a, a huge problem if their tenants can't afford to pay rent. Let's well, just assume you, for a moment, you let's put a little silver streak here. You own all these properties, all these rentals, and you have doctors and, let's just leave it at that. You got doctors who are renting all these properties. Well, you're not going to have a problem with your tenants. You're not going to have a problem with your tenants paying rent. So, yeah, you'll be okay. Or people that invested in Bitcoin very long time ago when it first came out, and now they own a couple thousand Bitcoin. Again, 
there's a lot of circumstances and there's there's a bunch of people out there that are not going to be affected by anything. I'm talking about the average person. The average person who relies on a 9 to 5 gig all day every day, even if it's a a skilled something, right? A plumber, a nurse, you know, an accountant, something like that. Injury shuts all that down. A car accident where you're paralyzed from the neck down. Nursing, plumbing, electrical, accounting, all these things are not really going to be working for you that much anymore. Accounting might be a little different, but I'm sure I'm making my point. So living in my van taught me how easy, how fragile security is, how fragile the sense of security is where people live in these dwellings and feel like everything's okay. They got a great job. They got money in the bank. Life is good. No, it's not. The reality is you can lose the job literally within seconds. You'll end up going through the money in the bank because you're going to need it to survive in the meantime. That's what I've learned living in a van. It's made me very grateful in understanding that people become homeless for a multitude of reasons, but for those who have become homeless just because governments shut things down and make people homeless, destroy lives, destroy businesses, whatever. We're not getting political. We'll do that in another location. But this is what I've seen between 2020, 21, and 22. This is what I see. All these people surrounding me all day, every day, for the last three years, really. Coast to coast, this is what's happening. It was happening in Boston. It was happening here. But in Boston, I was a little naive in my first year, my first six months. I didn't realize that all these people in the parking lot were not employees of a 24-hour fitness. There were people who were hiding in their cars, sleeping. I would see them in the mornings. So I come to Vegas, and now I really see it, right? My eyes are more open to it. I'm looking for it. And when you live in a dwelling, all I can say is you really do have a fake, false sense of security. There is no security. I worked for myself for a very, very long time. I guess there was a, a real bad economic crashy thingy in 2008. I keep hearing about it all the time. I don't know what was going on in my life in 2008. I really don't. I'd have to go back and maybe dig up some photos in Dropbox or something to give me some memories of where I was at that time. But I, I don't think I was crashing or collapsing or, you know, I think I was still plumbing and maybe it was really slow and I wasn't much of a political person up until two years ago. I didn't even it's not get into that. So that's what I've learned. And, you know, maybe it's a thought process you've never had before. Maybe you'll take this video and you'll realize, oh, okay. That's something to think about. I work. I don't have money. I don't have savings. Okay. Traveling is beautiful. And even better than that is the idea of who cares. I don't have any money in the bank. I'm just going to travel and, and, and land at this place and work here for a couple weeks to get some money. That's beautiful to me. That's great. I don't, my mind, my brain wouldn't allow me to live on such a thin line knowing if my van, I've already lost the motor in this van. I replaced it. I lost my transmission in this van. I can't imagine driving across the country like I did 14 months ago and my transmission just completely completely gives it up and I don't have any money I'm just driving to the next state because I'm gonna stop in that state I'm gonna work in you know Albuquerque New Mexico and I'm gonna work at Walmart or, or something thingy thingy and a little gig or whatever I'm gonna make X Y and Z dollars and then I'm gonna take that money to fill up the tank and get some food and hit the road but now you just acquired a two thousand dollar bill the transmission, because the new transmission for this van is 1600 just for the tranny. Who's going to put it in? You can do it on the side of a road somewhere? I could. I know how. I've done it several times. But they're very heavy. 
and you're on your back because you don't have a lift, right? So it's extremely awkward. I'm sure you don't have any type of transmission jack. Yeah, you can make one with wood and a regular jack. But I'm going to tell you, it's still heavy. you got to balance it. And when you, it's a lot of things that go into a transmission. That's why I paid to have it put in. It cost me 700 bucks. So with all that said, I personally couldn't imagine not having the ability financially to get my vehicle back to a healthy condition. If my engine just blew up, blew up on me or my transmission or my rear end for, the, for that matter, that's probably the original rear end. Probably hasn't been serviced in probably at least 20, if not ever. It's due to fail. I got a problem with my left back brake, drum brakes. It keeps wanting to drag a little bit. I lost my master cylinder the other day. Brake pedal went straight to the floor. That master cylinder was 120 bucks. Made a little video about it. What if I didn't have $120? Plus the, the bottle of um, brake fluid, the little you know self bleeding kit that you need when you're by yourself, pump your brakes, bottle catches it, gets the air out for you. You know all these things add up, right? <clears throat> what if you didn't have that much money? Now you got no brakes. You're just sitting here in the middle of Las Vegas, pulled into a parking lot. Probably not that ideal of a parking lot to be staying overnight for multiple nights because you don't have money because you can't fix your brakes. We're only talking about brakes. We're not talking about the alternator failed or the battery failed. My battery in this vehicle is a, almost $200. It's an Optima battery. It's about a year and a half old. Whatever. Not that I have to put an Optima battery. Batteries nowadays are still expensive. It's not like a few years ago, you walk into AutoZone and get the super cheap battery that was like $88 or $90. No, they're all well over $100, bucks, 140 150 So, I'm not preaching to anybody financially. I've done that before. All I'm saying is, for me, I've learned that living in a van has changed my perspective and has shown me how fragile security is. I'm a plumber. And on top of all that, I'm a union plumber. I'm guaranteed a job. I'm guaranteed a job anywhere on the planet. Planet. Planet Earth. I said that. That's correct. Union plumber. So, with all that said, look around you. Think a little differently how fragile a sense of security is. Now, if you're the type of person who's aiming to go full wilderness and and you're not, you don't care about all that money stuff. That's a whole different story. Do what you got to do. But for me, I'm a city kid. I'll always be a city kid. Matter of fact, I'm more of a hood, hood rat-ish city kid. I need the hustle and bustle of the city around me. The sirens, the homeless, the crackheads, the tweakers. I need this in my environment. Kind of grew up with it. I'll always need it. It's who I am. But for the rest of you, have fun, be safe, do what you do. I just wanted to make a point that, one, you feel all the elements from weather. You see the way people live, truly up close and personal. It's 3D. That's it. Enjoy the rest of your night. And by the way, you got to subscribe to this channel, to me, because it helps me grow. And I would love to grow. And it's only like... 0.000000000000003% of the people who are actually subscribed. Watch my videos. So, you know, hit the bell thing, hit the like button, help me grow. When people drop likes, especially comments, I love comments. I like comments more than likes. It motivates me. And then I have a tendency to make more videos. But when I put up a video and it gets like 1.2 views, it's like, eh, nobody likes me. <laughs> I know you love me. How could you not? It's me we're talking about. Um, listen, just do me a favor. 
help me get to 42 million subscribers. I think we can get it done in about a year. You know what I'm going to do.